Hey guys, Desolator Magic here with what is finally, assuming I can fit them all in one video, the final spoiler video for New Capenna. The cards just keep on coming, and like I said in the last videos, about 80-90% of these are really, really well designed. Um, better than any set I've seen in the last couple years. Okay, better cards than I've seen in the last couple years. The set, eh, okay, whatever. Three color, never gonna work, never healthy and standard, never just a good direction to go, but... The way that they designed some of the mono-colored and dual-colored and some of the individual for outside standard cards that are three-color, very, very good, well-balanced, appropriate, fun, interesting, never-before-seen, just absolutely impressive, and it's a shame that they're in a set that comes together to not come together very well, if that makes sense. So let's start with Tenacious Underdog. It's a two-cost black, three-two human warrior, not bad, with Blitz 4, okay. You pay for also, part of the cost is you have to pay two life, and then if you do, you drop it in, sack it at the end of turn when you do, or when it dies, that turn, you draw a card. Throw away creatures that hit hard when you drop them in, giving other colors kind of pseudo haste, eh, it's interesting, I, I kind of like it. It's kind of flirting with a bit of an issue with the color pie, but you know, sometimes it goes right, sometimes it goes wrong. But get this, you may cast Tenacious Underdog from your graveyard using its Blitz ability. So, you lose two life every time, but every time you pay four, it comes back and it's a 3-2. So, I've seen Phoenix is more annoying than this, but I really don't like that you can have more than one of these in play at once. I guess to do that, if they kept killing it, you'd need eight mana, but it would have been nice if they gave this legendary. Especially, consider the amount of self-mill. You toss two or three of these into the graveyard along with like a couple of Catildas and you just won. But remember, it's going to hit for three, you lose two, and then it's gone at the end of turn, whether it died in combat or of natural causes at the end of the turn. So it's awfully hard to win a game, you know, if you just keep paying for that and you never block and never do anything else because you spent all your mana. So this is flirting with being overpowered, but it's, uh, I think it's appropriate. I think it's just a good card. So like I said, very impressive set with very impressive cards. Very well designed. It's a shame there's some broken stuff in here ruining it. So next up, Speakeasy Server. It's a 5 cost 3-3 three, three with Flying Bird Citizen. And when it enters battlefield, you gain one life for each other creature you control. Huge, 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 huge card. I obviously don't need to explain why if you've played Standard in the last year. Or if you've seen any of the spoilers for this. Next up, Halo Scarab. Hey, finally a reference to Halo in a set that was supposed to be all about it. I wonder if they scrambled to remove it at the last second. But the whole controversy was like weeks ago, and this was already not just finalized, but like printed and shipped. So, I don't know, could have been a whole bunch of uh, stuff about nothing, but I, I, I don't know. So anyway, it's a colorless 2-drop, two 2-1 two artifact creature insect, and if you pay 2, exile it from your graveyard and then create a treasure token. Okay, throw away dummy creature where you can ramp later. Um, I like it. I don't like treasure decks right now, but I like this card individually. Next up, Wing Shield Agent. It's a 2 3 for 3 human soldier and enters battlefield with a shield counter on it, and when it attacks, up to one other target creature uh, gains flying until end of turn, aka the Pegasus effect. Yeah, that's just a solid card. Um, once again, I don't know if this would necessarily stand up on its own in standard constructed, but it's good. Next up, Boon of Safety. It's a 1 cost white instant common. Put a shield counter on target creature that's Scry 1. I'm glad it's Scry instead of Draw. That would have been a little much. So yeah, you gotta kill it twice, it'll survive a board wipe. That, that whole shield thing surviving a board wipe, that is gonna be the biggest mistake ever. And they're probably gonna, instead of start banning shield cards, because there's too many of them, start banning board wipes. I wouldn't mind it, but doing it in the middle of like a Citizen Green White Swarm deck with Scoot Swarm legal. I mean guys, just looking at this set, it's gonna be like a contest to see which overdue for a banning card gets banned first. Because just looking at this, you cannot have what's in standard right now mixed with this set, mostly because of what's already in standard, not because of anything in this set. The set is pretty low to appropriately powered, and everything else is just broken as hell, and it's just every time you add possibilities, you add fuel to the fire. Should be interesting, and once again, just like I've said for like the last 15 set releases, I wouldn't touch standard for a month after this releases, and unfortunately, we all know they're going to focus on alchemy and rebalancing that. Well, how about you rebalance Scoot Swarm into the ban list in standard and cut this alchemy crap because nobody wants it, nobody plays it. How about that, wizards? So next up, Rocks Pummeler. It's a 6 cost 6 3 Rhino in green. Oh, Rhino Soldier. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, it enters with a shield counter on it, and it is trample as long as it has a shield counter on it. Oh, that's just good. I mean, for 6 it's not. I guess they were, they were scared to make anything in this set cost an appropriate amount of mana, but uh, I've said it a million times before, a lot of these cards are just for draft. 
Too bad three color sets are terrible for draft. Uh, next up, expendable lackey. Uh, oh, this should be good. A one cost one one in blue human citizen. And if you pay to exile this card from your graveyard and create a one one blue fish creature token with this creature can't be blocked, activate only as a sorcery. I'm telling you, these unblockable fish tokens are going to come back to bite them in multiple formats. That is just careless. Uh, next up, Bouncer's Beatdown. It's a three cost green. Oh, God, a force fight, I bet. Uh, yep, spell costs uh, two less to cast if it targets a black permanent. I'm surprised those woke morons didn't skip this in the uh, color advantage order. Anyway, uh, deals X damage to target creature or planeswalker, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. Okay, so force fight with added steps, whatever. Uh, if that creature or planeswalker would die this turn, XL instead. Once again, it's following in the trend of, I can attack you, but you can't attack me back, because force fights are too, you know, balanced and, and make you actually prove you have an advantage. And mono green has been pretty nutty lately, so, yeah, I don't know about this one. Uh, next up, prize fight. Oh, the raccoon's beating the, uh, rhino. That, that, that's not gonna happen. Um, oh gosh, I, I swear, I didn't even read this one ahead of time. It's another force fight, great. Uh, so you pay two instant speed, common, you know, two, two green, great. Target creature you control fights target creature you don't control, which means it can actually take damage and die and not just turn around, oh, I'm indestructible, blizzard brawl, woo, and then free swing. Add that to the list of the cards that need to go. And then, of course, create a treasure token, because of course. Okay, absolutely terrible card overall. Uh, next up, Sticky Fingers. It's a one cost red enchantment aura. Enchant creature, enchanted creature has menace. And when it deals common damage to a player, create a treasure token. With menace for one, really. And then when it dies, draw a card. That is way too much value for one. Way, 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 way too much value and like combat evasion for one. Boy, this set's going downhill quick on this one. Uh, next up, Exhibition Magician. Really? Is this an unset now? Uh, three cost red, two one human wizard, and when it enters the battlefield, choose one. Create a one one green and white citizen creature token, or create a treasure token. So there's more treasure, trash, and stuff that feeds the citizen deck, which, I don't know, as good as it is, I think people are going to stick to two colors, and I don't think that red is one of them. Uh, next up, Cutthroat Contender. It's a one-cost black 1-1 one -one vampire warrior, because, of course, you got to have vampires in every set, even though everybody hates them. Just let Twilight die, okay? Just just can we leave that in the past? Anyway, uh, pay one life, and it gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. Activate only once each turn, because otherwise, oh my gosh, would that be broken? In other words, I'm surprised they didn't do it. Uh, next up, Gathering Throng. It's a white 3-1... Uh, three cost human citizen it enters the battlefield and you may search your library for any number of cards named gathering throng reveal them put them into your hand then shuffle oh it's another silly draft gimmick where you draft like 12 of these yeah it's the old shoot the moon thing it's yeah no it's not quite up there with the outside the game crap but it's pretty damn close so next up uh paragon of modernity Four cost colorless 2-2, two, two, artifact creature, angel warrior, and it has flying. That artwork is amazing, by the way. Unlike that absolute just deranged garbage uh, in this set. I forget which card it was, but it was the same artist as Faithless Looting. Yeah, they bought another one from her. I don't know why. That's a lie. It's because she's an SGW freak. Anyway, uh, flying, pay three, and Paragon of Modernity gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. If exactly three colors of mana were spent to activate this ability, put a 1-1 counter on it instead. Oh, nice. Oh, you could build that up quick. I would throw one or two of these into a three-color deck right after I don't build it. Next up, quick draw dagger. It's a three-cost colorless artifact equipment. My gosh, just shave that mustache. It does not suit you at all. And it has flash. Okay, an artifact equipment with flash. Yeah, and when it enters the battlefield, attach it to target creature you control because I guess they're not quite done doing that auto-equip crap that's always broken. Now that said, it's a three drop, uh, gains first strike and plus one plus one, it has equip one, so, okay. But you gotta be careful just passing out colorless stuff. Remember Shadow Spear where they gave every color trample and every color lifelink simultaneously for one drop to equip? Yeah, they just gave every single color first strike, which, eh, okay, but... I mean, you mix black with first strike and like death touch. Yeah, you, you cannot defeat that in combat. I think this is a little dangerous, but at least it's three and it's not, you know, that great on his face. Next up, fake your own death. What? Are we back on Innistrad now? What is this? Anyway, <laughs> vampire dude hiding in the painting. Why not? I actually had to check, like, is this the right set symbol or is this actually the right set? This, this just went to a weird place. So... 
Two cost black instant until end of turn target creature gets plus two plus own oh gains. When this creature dies, return it to the battlefield tapped under its uh, owner's control and you create a treasure. That is actually more powerful than anything in my black ambush deck. So, wow. Cranking up the power in the common slot at the end here. Okay, I mean, gotta have something playable. And the funny thing is, it's almost all mono cards because they know what they're about. Uh, next up, Capenna Express. Cool. Okay, I just like this no matter what it does. Uh, oh, it's a vehicle. Okay, take that back. Um, green four cost artifact vehicle. Sacrifice a treasure, and it becomes an artifact creature until end of turn. So you can basically crew it with a treasure. Uh, but the treasure's gone then. Uh, and then otherwise, crew three, and it's a six six, so no trample, no nothing. It's just a hyper powerful creature. Like, imagine it's a vanilla 6-6 six, six for 4, and then, oh, if you're running treasures, you can run it, kind of. And crew 3 isn't that insane either, but, um, I don't know. You lose the mana you put into the, the 3 power thing. Yeah, it's not that great, but I, I think, you know, 6-6 six, six is just plain good in uh, limited, especially if it's not always a creature and they can't target it off turn. So, you know, don't sleep on this. Like, seriously, don't sleep on this train. You will end up downtown. Next up, Revelation of Power. Uh, it's a 2-cost white instant. Target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. It has a counter on it. Oh, if. If it has a counter on it, it also gains flying and lifelink until end of turn. Okay, that's narrowly specific, but wow, if you can pull that off. Which I kind of like that. It's like, it's good, and then in a really rare condition, you get a huge combination of things, but it's a one-off. It just does one thing. It doesn't just instantly win the game. It's just extremely good. Now, this is interesting. Story spotlight card, so you know I gotta read the flavor text. As Obnixilis closed in, Halo swept through Giadia like cocaine. Oh, I, re I misread that. Like an electric current of cocaine. And inside her... <laughs> sure. Something long dormant unfurled its wings. Was it blood pressure? Hold on, hold on, hold on. If you don't see this joke coming, then you must not know how lowbrow this channel is. But we're, we're going. We're scraping the bottom on this one. Halo... It gives you wings. Literally, drink it, you fly away and kill a demon. I mean, last time I had Red Bull, I wanted a three-state police chase. <laughs> Just kidding. As far as you know. Uh, next up, Gilded Pinions. Uh, it's a two-cost artifact equipment. Hey, speak of that, where's like Obnixilis' car or whatever? We haven't seen the dang car yet. That I know of. Maybe we did. I don't know. Maybe it was day one. Uh, so, two-drop artifact equipment. When Gilded Pinions enters the battlefield, create a treasure token, because of course... People are just going to be driving around with 50,000 tokens. Hopefully they just ban some of the dragons. And then honestly, if they do that, the haste dragons, I think the treasure deck might be kind of fairish. It is inherently a fair mechanic, but you have to be really careful with it. And right now they are not. So anyway, crypt creature is flying and equip two. Um, I think there is like mechanical wings or something like that. That's a little cheaper than this. I don't think this is worth the treasure because like you had to spend the money to bring this out or money. I'm way too New Yorked up by this one. Mana, whatever, same thing. Mana is money, Halo is cocaine. Okay, got it. Next up, Broker's Hideout. I don't know, my city, the broke people hang out outside the Walgreens. Kind of ironic, given their prices. Anyway, uh, when Broker's Hideout enters the battlefield, sacrifice it. Uh, okay. When you do, search for uh, search the library for a basic forest, plains, or island card. Put it on the battlefield tapped. Then shuffle, and you gain one life. So this is another one in the cycle, but it's been a while, so I wanted to outline how this works. Also, you don't sack it, like, at will. You sack it immediately. So you better know what color you want right now. I think when a permanent leaves play blah, you might get some interaction there in formats outside of standard, actually, with these, too. And once again, they're ripping off Harry Potter if you read the flavor text. Uh, then we got Riveteer's Overlook, same thing. Uh, and then Glittermonger. <laughs> we did it, guys. We found the most flamboyant character in the entire set. He looks like he got out of a rented Tesla and is trying to sell you on a multi-level marketing scheme in the middle of the day outside of a Planet Fitness in San Francisco. Weirdly specific, yet weirdly true. So, <laughs> forecast Green Elf Rogue. Oh god, there's elves here too? What do they not have? Uh, tap it, create a treasure token, and that's it. That's a 1-4. Wow. Next up, High Rise Saw Jack. Oh, that's kind of cool, actually. Um, it's, it's like a window cleaner, but extreme. Maybe he's been drinking that halo and it gives you wings anyway. Uh, 2 3 4 3 in green elf citizen. Reach, and when uh, it blocks a creature with flying, High Rise Saw Jack gets plus 2 plus 0 oh until end of turn. Because as we all know, you can't start or use a chainsaw on the ground. Next up, Warm Welcome. The heck is that? A portal to another plane? 
Is it just reflected? What is that? Wait a minute. Welcome to the family. Chef Rocco sends their congratulations. That's a flavor text. Okay, that tells me nothing. Anyway, three cost uh, green instant. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from among them and put it on. Uh, put it in your hand. Good Lord. Uh, put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Create a 1-1 green and white citizen creature token. Okay, that's solid, but there's a very, very similar but overall better uh, green one-cost spell. It's top four land or enchantment, and yeah. But if you're, you know, getting citizens going, I'm tempted to say that's, you know, draft only, but we'll see. Next up, Broken Wings. I love this card. Hopefully you know what it does at this point because it's amazing. It's like plummet except good. Uh, three cost, green instant, and destroy target, artifact, enchantment, or creature with flying. A.K.A. all of green's target slash enemies. Love it. Absolutely love that card. Uh, next up, Civic Gardener. It's a 2 cost green 2-2 two, two human citizen, and whenever it attacks, untap target creature or land. Oh, that won't be totally broken with certain lands, but hey, that's outside of standard, not my problem. Sincerely, direct quote from Wizards. <laughs> Just kidding. Next up, for the family. Ooh, somebody's been watching uh, Fast and Furious. It's a one cost green instant. Target creature gets plus two plus two till end of turn. If you control four or more creatures, that creature gets uh, plus four plus four until end of turn. Oh, wow. So that's like on par situationally with like one of the best boost spells in all of modern. Okay. That ain't no joke. This is really good. Uh, next up, Jackama. Yeah, MTX Jackama. If anybody remembers that meme from before the ages of YouTube. Anyway, red two cost artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus two plus oh and annoys the hell out of everybody. Also, equipped too. Next up, ready to rumble. It's a five cost red sorcery. Choose one. It deals five damage to target creature, planeswalker, or destroy target artifact. But five's a little high. It's pretty obvious just for limited. Next up, wrecking crew. It's a five cost four five human warrior with reach and trample. Simple. Kind of draft chaff, but you never know. Uh, next up, Antagonize. It's a two-cost red instant. Target creature gets plus four, plus three till end of turn. Holy crap. Okay, we had a very problematic plus three, plus one for one in the past, and it would just sit there and win drafts single-handedly. This is awfully darn close. I don't know. This is bigger than something you'd see in green. Uh, this is, yeah, they shouldn't have done this. And if they did, it darn well shouldn't have been in the common slot. Next up, Daring Escape. It's a one-cost red instant target creature. Gets plus one, plus one, and gains first strike until end of turn. Scry one. Okay, that's just good. Plus one and first strike is like, it, you don't need the toughness. And any kind of ambush boost for one, yeah, they ain't gonna see it coming. I think red's gonna be the one to draft. Mono red right here. With, with Blitz mixed with these level of ambushes all in common, yeah, I think I'm gonna do that day one just to catch people off guard. Because you're sitting there trying to build up a three-color deck and get to your rare, and I've already beat you on, like, turn five. And this is another story spotlight card. Well, there's a lot of these. Uh, let's see. As the adversary's forces descended upon the gala, Elspeth whispered to Giadia, I can get you out of here, but we have to go now. No wonder this card's in red, because those outfits are flaming. Next up, Midnight Assassin. It's a three-cost, one-two vampire assassin with flying and death touch. You can never have too many one-power flying death touch creatures. Yes, this will actually stop some things in a creative way. Next up, Crooked Custodian. It's a two cost three, two ogre rogue in black and common. Okay, but it enters battlefield tapped. Still very good card. Next up, demons do. It's a uh, four cost black instant scry two, then draw two cards, you lose two life. Or as I like to call it, read the bones. It is word for word the same. It's just one more mana than read the bones. So, um, okay. Honestly, looking at it, this probably should cost four. Next up, run out of town. Well, where are you going to go? A different plane? Are we going to see, like, new, new Capenna and it's just, like, a farming village? <laughs> anyway, uh, run out of town. It's a four-cost blue instant. The owner of Target Nonland Permanent puts it on top of the, or bottom of their library. Oh, God, a super bounce. That's what we needed on top of way too much blue bounce in way too much blue control. When they've already banned Divide by Zero and honestly need to ban most of the rest of the blue cheap effects. But this costs four. I don't think this will be, like, the, the new biggest menace in, uh, you know, constructed. Come on. Next up, Sewer Crocodile, because of course you gotta have that. It's a six cost four six in blue, and if you pay four, it can't be blocked this turn. Okay, that's ridiculous. This ability costs three less to activate if there are five or more mana values among cards in your graveyard, which there aren't. But my gosh, that's absurd. Now this is hard to get out. It, its attack power doesn't merit its mana cost. You gotta pay for it to be blocked, and then you need an aura or equipment probably to finish them off, but... 
you could stack up the right stuff on this, make it hexproof, like double strike and lifelink, and just you don't need anything else. You could play duck and cover with this, although I like in duck and cover decks the duck to be four or five uh, mana, not six, and have no strings attached. So, yeah, they probably shouldn't have done this in case it becomes overpowered, but it, it looks pretty unplayable at six. We'll see. Next up, Backstreet Bruiser. Hello, 3-3 three, three for 2 in blue. Okay, you never see that. But Defender, it's a Cephalic Rogue. Uh, as long as there are two or more counters among creatures you control, Backstreet Bruiser can attack as though it didn't have Defender. Just two total? Wow, okay. I mean, we saw another conditional one, and it was pretty decent. Eh, this is just good. Now, this kind of thing, you usually see it to make blue draftable. I don't think it is, but at least they tried. Uh, next up, Majestic Metamorphosis. It's a three-cost blue instant until end of turn. Target artifact or creature becomes a 4-4 four, four angel artifact creature and gains flying. Draw a card. So, end soul artifact, but not as good, but still really good. I mean, obviously, you know, you would just target a treasure. Uh, this isn't one of the typical treasure colors, but I don't know. It looks decent. Next up, uh, Backup Agent. It's a 2-cost 1-1 one, one human citizen. When it enters battlefield, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature. Okay, yeah, they usually print something like this. It, it's, uh, you know, if you get enough of these, you can really stack it up. So, once again, really good for draft. I keep saying that, but these cards, like, almost across the board, none of them are good for constructed, so I gotta say they're good for something. Uh, next up, reprint of Kill Shot. Three cost, uh, white instant. Quite simply, destroy target attacking creature. I like Seal Away better, but this is only one mana more, and it is gone gone. Unless it has a shield, then this does nothing. Yeah, not a fan of that. Not really looking forward to this set overall. Next up, Sky Crier. Oh, come on. The flavor text is breaking news, blah, 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 whatever. But really, it, it's the last day of the spoilers. There's like one left after this. Okay, didn't know that. Um, and, and they didn't print the newsboy in the news cap, yelling extra, extra, read all about it. Come on, that's like the biggest cliche ever. How could they not do that? They made it a bird, a dorky looking bird with a megaphone. Come on. Okay, so two cost white creature bird citizen flying in lifelink. Nice. Pay for you and target opponent each draw a card. Oh, I like that option just in case of emergency. It's dangerous, but it's like a last ditch effort to maybe pull something out. I don't like unreliable gambles, but this, it's not that much of a gamble. You never know. Very, very neat. I, I actually like that. Also, come on, a one, one for one bird with lifelink. Can we have it back? I know it was a like game rooting, which is hilarious, but still. And finally, Giadia herself, font of hope. A legendary creature, Angel. Oh, I was wondering who she was this whole time. Okay. So something or someone, um, probably Elspeth is running around turning the angels back from statues into angels, I guess. And we already know that the plane can't create any more angels because it's usually a god that does it or a head archangel or something. And obviously she left, I think, um, I don't know. I don't remember who they said created this plane, but it, it didn't make it to the wiki page. So either they retracted that or I just remember it wrong. I, you know, I, I think at some point, probably this weekend, because I'm going to be working all day Saturday, um, I'm going to just read the dang story. So it's a 2 cost 2-2, two, two, legendary creature angel, flying in vigilance. Okay, already really good. No lifelink, though, so this isn't just going to be fuel for the white life gain decks. Yes, decks, plural. Uh, each other angel you control enters the battlefield with an additional 1-1 one, one counter on it for each angel you already control. Ooh, that is stupidly broken and overpowered. I mean, just mix that with, with the, oh, you get to 27 life and plus two across the board, and it's just over. And then we get the 4-3, where you can grab three of them from outside the game, or run 2-2 two, two like a normal person. Yeah, this is utterly ridiculous. Then you can tap her, add one white man into your mana pool, and spend it only to cast an angel spell. This card is ridiculous. I, I'm blown away by the fact that they would actually do this. And it's a story spotlight, and obviously she, like, saves the whole plane or whatever, but... Well, welcome to Mary Sue 101, where they're like, you know, lead character syndrome or, or whatever it's called, where they just got to make her unstoppable. I'm not even making a joke. I'm making an observation. That has just been factually how they and companies like them do things like this when it comes to story, lore, and characters. In fact, have you seen the disgraceful new Thor uh, trailer? Yeah. Right up there with the latest He-Man series. Oh, and also, apparently we're not done with the anime crap yet because the flavor text is... The source of the Cabaretti's halo turned out to be a single teenage girl. Really? Does she team up with a teenage boy driving a giant mech? Oh, wait. Oh, God. It's that green card, the skyscraper, isn't it? Oh, just kill me. Anyway, can't wait to see what, you know, a bit of a wrecking ball this set is for um, 
Standard. Uh, honestly, I think this is the most egregious card in there. I'm still stuck on. Get this. The last one, the very dead last card, at least in, in my spoiler order, this one, or the very first card that they spoiled, where every single upkeep you put a counter on every single creature, indiscriminately, no color lock, no limit, nothing. Also not legendary. That is absurd. And then to do this when angels already exist, this is nuts. At least they made this legendary. Think about this card if it wasn't legendary. Just, just think about that for a second. At least Spark Double is no longer legal, but my gosh. Yeah, I, I'd almost say that they're going to have to ban this, but I would let you know prefer they, they let this go and do something about the existing Angel decks that are lifelink, you know, or life gain plus one, plus one across the board, you know. Or plus two, plus two, or counter drop, or trigger, or just all flying blitz, or the Valkyrie, oh, when it dies, you lose a creature. Or tap it and kill something, and just all the sagas, it's, that's a little much. I think that power levels, there's nothing too individually egregious about that deck either, but it wins a little too much, and it's a little too high of a power level, and a little too good, a little too life gainy, too defensive, too in the air. It's just a little bit too much of everything, and they need to water it down, and I think that was one where, even back then, they could have banned one card and got rid of it, but... It wasn't even the number one deck in the world, so yeah, of course they're not going to take action against it, because they'd have to take action against the rest, but I want to see a big sweeping ban right after this comes out. I really, really do. And you know, stay subscribed if you want to hear about it when it happens. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you guys next time. And watch for the uh, leaked spoilers and the commander set spoilers, because those are coming tomorrow.